This part is about why and how k-means can lead to poor results and where you should pay attention when you want to use it. The concept of k-means relies on spherical clusters that are separable so that the mean converges towards the cluster center. We expect the clusters to be of similar sizes so that the assignment to the nearest cluster center is the correct assignment. For example, we apply the k-means algorithm to the iris flower dataset, which is a well-known dataset which contains three flower types according to four features. With applying k-means with k equal to 3, the result often fails to separate the three iris species contained in the dataset. With k equal to 2, the two visible clusters, one containing two species, will be discovered, whereas with k equal 3, one of the two clusters will be split into two even parts. In fact, with k equal 2, it's more appropriate for this dataset despite the data sets containing three classes. This result makes clear that for k-means clustering, the quality of the results highly depends on certain criteria of the data. It works well for some data sets and fails for others. Well, this is of course the case for any clustering algorithm. The result of k-means can be seen as the Voronoi cells of the cluster means. The Voronoi cells partition the data space into regions based on the distance to the mean points. The line segments of the Voronoi diagram are all the points in the plane that are equidistant to the nearest sites. Since data is split halfway between cluster means, this can lead to suboptimal splits as uh, can be seen in the following example. This is the simplest example for which the k-means algorithm cannot make a good split. In this data set, there are obviously two clusters, but the variants of the individual clusters are different. As a side mark, for this particular data set, the mixture of Gaussian's model can be applied. This is done by using the AM algorithm to find the parameters for the Gaussian distributions. Here you see the result for the GMM. The GMM is explained in another video. So, in conclusion, it does not work well with clusters in the original data of different size and different density because k-means assumes the variance of the distribution of each attribute is spherical and the same. Here is another example for which the k-means clustering algorithm will fail. Looking at this image, the, we humans immediately recognize two natural groups of points. There's no mistaking them. So let's see how k-means does. As we see, this is not correct at all. The algorithm does its work and minimizes the error, but it does not serve the purpose of finding optimal clusters. If you ask which clustering algorithm could possibly find correct clusters for this data set, here is the answer. Single linkage hierarchical clustering works very well, as you see in this picture. To show you how the k-means clustering algorithm is dependent on the Euclidean space in which the data points lie, we take this data set and transform it into polar coordinates. Then the result of the clustering looks like this. In this case, the clustering works perfectly. This example shows you how some drawbacks can be fixed and that you sometimes have to think outside of the box. Let me show you another example, where we have three clusters with the same variance but with an uneven number of points per cluster. The first cluster has 20 data points, the next one has 50 and the last one has 500. Let's see how k-means performs. Well, the result looks not very nice either. The k-means algorithm seems to give more weight to larger clusters. In practice, that means it's happy to let that small cluster end up far away from any center, while it uses those centers to split up a much larger cluster. The prior probability for all k clusters is the same, i.e. each cluster has roughly equal number of observations. 
Furthermore, I want to stress that k-means does not tell you how good the clustering algorithm is suited for the data. Even for a uniformly distributed dataset, the algorithm finds some clusters, but obviously they don't tell you anything. Of course, you wouldn't throw k-means on such data if you knew that any clustering method is basically senseless. But sometimes, especially for high-dimensional data, it could happen that you have no clue how the distribution of the data looks like. K-means always converges to an optimum of the error minimization problem, but doesn't tell you how much sense these optima make. At last, k-means has a high risk of ending up in a local optimum. You can see one example here. Even if the number of k-clusters is picked optimally, you can end up with poor results. For example, in this area, you could see with your eyes that these are three clusters instead of two. While on the other hand, we have areas in which obviously more cluster centers are than clusters are around. So, I hope this video helped you on deciding if you want to use k-means algorithm or not. Please also have a look at the video of the applications where k-means is suited well. So that's it, see you next time.